Hey everybody, this is Corey Lambertson with Whitmix Corporation. We are coming at you again on this Monday afternoon, uh, depending where you're at. It could be Monday morning, um, could be Tuesday, I don't know, depends on where you're watching. Uh, we are going to cover today with me and Bryce Hiller, we're going to cover the Toronto Bridge design in the Three Shape 2020 software. Uh, for today's seminar, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box. And this is being recorded. And you can also, uh, if you need any CE credits, of course, you'll be able to take the quiz at the end and uh, be able to qualify or be able to, uh, I guess, quantify off of your CE credits. So once again, my name is Corey Lambertson. I'm going to pass it over to uh, Bryce. And uh, he's going to tell us about, I guess, what a Toronto Bridge is. And then we're going to jump right into the design process into the 2020 software. So this is super exciting, a super uh, super cool change for 3Shape. Yep, cool, thanks Corey. Um, hi everybody, I'm Bryce. Uh, today we're going to be doing a Toronto bridge or I like to call them a thimble bar because it kind of conveys what it is a little bit better. So essentially what we're gonna be making is like an all on four bar with gingiva and with uh, basically uh, tooth preps instead of full contour teeth. Um, so this is one of the more advanced features in 3Shape. We're gonna do our best to get through this in an hour today. Um, we'll pretty much, you know, take it as far as we can possibly uh, today. So um, I've already got a case scanned in. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna dive in. I'm gonna, we're, I'll go briefly over the order form um, and then we're just gonna get into the design. Um, yeah. This is one, one type of restoration in 3Shape that uh, we get a, just a ton of questions about all in fours in general because uh, in three shape, uh, I think people tend to think they're a little bit more complicated than they are. Um, so we're going to hopefully uh, maybe try to simplify some of that today. Yep. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, also, uh, for everybody that's watching, uh, uh, feel free to ask any questions throughout, uh, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or on Zoom. Uh, feel free to, to ask away and we'll be, we'll be taking those, uh, we'll be fielding those questions as we go. All right. Uh, can everybody see my screen, Corey? Does it look like, am I on the right one? It looks good. So I can see your three shapes. So we're, we're good there. So we eat. Okay, cool. So I've already got a case scanned in. Uh, I want to go over the order form though. So uh, side note, this is, uh, this feature is new to 2020. Uh, uh, prior to 2020, um, Typically, to do these, uh, you want to use uh, typically a special full contour library that are um, it's just like a regular full contour tooth library, except they're, they're preps instead of actual teeth. Um, that's how I've always done these. Um, but now, 3Shape is, is releasing in the upcoming 2020 version uh, an actual dedicated workflow for this kind of um, uh, prosthesis. Yep. So uh, what we're going to do here in our order form, you can see the only thing I really need to change here, I'm actually going to unbridge these. So normally uh, when you would use, uh, you know, in, in prior versions, when you would use one of those special libraries, this is what your order form is going to look like. You're going to have screw retained uh, with Pontix and then everything is bridged. Um, uh, and this is going to be the same. However, we're going to unbridge these. We no longer need to bridge these, which is nice because um, previously all of your teeth your, your, ha had to be connected, even if they're the preps, they have to be connected somehow um, via a, a connector or, you know, actual like interproximal um, touching typically below where your margin is. Um, Three Shape did away with that. And that no longer, uh, you no longer have to have connectors or bridging of any type, which is really nice. Yep. Um, so this is our order form. So for our uh, implant sites, we're choosing screw retained restoration. I'm going to be working on a uh, true abutment library today. Uh, and then in between, we have our uh, uh, just regular um, library uh, full contour pontics, crown pontics um, for, for the in between. And again, no bridging. We are not bridging these, um, which seems counterintuitive because in any, anything else in 3Shape, if you have a pontic, you have to bridge them to something. Not anymore, not with this. Um, so this is our order form. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll jump into the design. Yeah, I really cringed when we set up that order form the first time. So we ran through this, me and Bryce did earlier today. And as soon as we set up the order form and we turned off that bridge function, it was like, I, I just cringed because I was waiting for that air to pop up. The elements are not connected uh, yeah. to the Pontic. So I was like, 
it just it felt weird but it worked yeah. so that was a uh, was kind of a cool change yep yeah it does feel weird it's like it goes against everything that we've been taught in three shape for the last however many years yeah Okay, so uh, first step, these first three steps really are just like anything else. Um, occlus occlusal alignment, uh, sculpt upper jaw. This is just our prepare step. I'm going to go ahead and assume that if you're watching this, you're already a three shape user. Uh, this is not something that, that if you've never used three shape before, you're gonna be lost. Uh, just telling you upfront, uh, you're not gonna really understand all of these steps that we're going through, because again, this is a really advanced feature in three shape. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart. Yep. Um, okay, so first thing we're doing is we are selecting scan uh, abutment three. I'm just gonna select right down here. Uh, and now I can see crown pontic four, five. So right now we're really just setting all of our annotations. Now there are some other cool features that we're going to see today that is a change for 2020. So if you have the 2019 software, uh, like the warnings, for example, if something's not connected properly, which yeah. it kind of blew my mind for a second, because usually in the older software for three shape, whenever there was a warning, it would not show. I mean, it would not show exactly where the defective area was. And now it's, it's like figured out. Yeah, it was like, you would just like guess and change and move, guess, change, move, and still have the air. Now it's like, it actually highlights it. It was like, what is this madness? It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, insertion direction, just like any other insertion direction, if you want to change it, we click set direction. I should already be fami pretty familiar with all of uh, how all this works. Let's go next. I'm trying to get through these first few steps so we can show yep. uh, the whole design here. Okay, so anatomy pre-design. Um, this is just like in any regular screw retained restoration. Uh, we've got our, our pre-design where we're basically just setting up um, the general vicinity of where we want all these restorations to be. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this one. It is, uh, I should just reset all of them. I think it's a, so that's a, I think this was a copy of our original I think so too. I wonder if you undid all moves. Nope. It's keeping it. That's okay. We'll work with it. Yeah. You know, actually, if I choose a different smile library. Yeah, it should reapply. Let's try that. You can use the improved library. Ooh, new Ooh. and improved. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm not I'm not going to spend uh, forever doing this because we have limited time. So anatomy pre-design, we're just getting these in the in the general vicinity uh, of where uh, where we would want these uh, where we'd want these teeth to be. Yeah, and of course for this design, we didn't pull in an opposing, but you would have an opposing if you were going to be truly designing uh, this. Uh, I guess in a in a in a real life scenario. Yeah. The exciting part is what's to come when it actually creates the virtual cutback, creating the Toronto or Thimble style bridge, which is super cool. Yeah. And so once again, just a reminder, if anybody has any questions about any step that Bryce is doing, please feel free to ask. Um, at this point in time, we are question free. So good job, Bryce. You're doing great. Yay. Everybody's probably just lost really is what it is. <laughs> like, what is this? What is this redheaded freak doing? <laughs> I hate it when you're trying to go fast and you're like on the spot. Everybody's Dory, judging. Everyone's Dory, judging you. Nobody's watching. I mean, nope. <laughs> nobody's paying attention to every move you're making. We can leave that there, right? That's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with this. It's okay. Just keep it right there. We're good. want to fill it and then move on.
computer froze up. Here we go. It was a close one. All right, that's fine for now. Um, I know that's not uh, nearly <laughs> optimal, but for the purposes of what we're doing, what we're doing, it's fine, especially because we're going to reduce these anyways. Yeah, it's something that I guess users will have to remember is that we're not going to spend that much time really on an anatomical setup, especially if you have the opposing, if you're to put it so it was just um, in some occlusion whatsoever, when you go through the next step and you create your virtual cutback, it doesn't yep. really matter. Yep. Uh, so uh, these are our emergence profiles. I'm not going to really worry about these. There's going to be gingiva and I'm going to be sculpting it anyway. Um, so if you want to change, uh, this is just like any other screw retained, you can change your emergence profile and then it's going to create everything underneath of this little margin area as a protected surface. But as most of you probably already know, um, later on when we're actually doing our sculpting, we can turn on the sculpt on protected surfaces option and then we can sculpt this anyways. Yep. Um, so I'm really just going to click next, uh, through this step. I'm not really too concerned right now with these. Right. So this is our main, uh, our main smile composer. This is where I'm going to be doing, uh, theoretically, the bulk of our design. So I'm just going to, I will spend a little bit of time here. So here's that sculpt on protected surfaces option. And the big thing that I want to do here is just uh, basically morph and, and get these in the, in the, you know, the, the generic dimensions, because what the software is going to do is it's going to analyze our design here, and then it's going to reduce that design uh, to create our thimble bar. So yep. I do want these to be dimensionally, uh, you know, close to what we actually want. So use my, just gonna use my sculpt knife. Oof. And this is not, you know, this isn't subjugable or anything. So I can really sculpt these pretty much however I want. There's going to be tissue here anyway, so I don't really need to do this. But if you're OCD like me, you're probably going to want to do it just because I have a hard time. <laughs> not. Moving beyond it, uh, okay. a slight mental block. You, one could say. One could say, I'll smooth that out. Cusp. Do we have any um, questions at this point yet, Corey? Not as of yet. Let me check the Facebook page. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. No questions, but Jimmy Dash says hi. Jimmy Dash, my man. Jimmy Dash is my man. He said, hey, guys, just a few minutes ago. How you doing, Jimmy? So let's see. No other questions or comments at this point in time. So we'll see how it uh, – once again, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Even if you just want to heckle Bryce or even Please myself. Heckle away. Heckle me. Heckling is encouraged. Probably makes a lot more sense than using my sculpt sculpt knife. All right, so these cuspids, those look good, right? Those are fine. I like them. Those are fine. I thought they looked pretty natural. Mm-hmm. Totes. Totes my goats. All right, and again, I'm not spending a bunch of time. These are getting reduced anyways, and we can design the reduction. But that ain't right. That's whack. That is how the kids say whack. whack.
Now, one thing that can happen, if I turn on my minimal thickness here, um, it is possible to get some some weird errors, at least in 2019. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see about 2020. With the minimal thickness right here of these interfaces, sometimes you need to bring these all the way up to minimal thickness. Not the obviously not the where the screw channel is coming through, but you know, bring um, them all the way up past the screw channel for me, please. Yes, yes, I will. It'll be a very large reduction. But sometimes those are, that'll cause issues if there are minimal thickness areas right. uh, like like that. So we just got to keep in mind that we're going to have gingiva. Um, so, yep, keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to move on. Bam. Actually. Okay, that'll, that'll do just fine. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, next at this point. Again, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm gonna click yes to all here. Um, again, I'm really not worried about contact areas because these are gonna be reduced. So this is where you're gonna see a, a difference, a deviation between 2020 and 2019. So over here on the, on, on the left-hand side, we have our normal gingiva anatomy and sculpts, and then we have, you see a bridge reduction. So this is that new feature. So let's go ahead yep. and let's draw our uh, gingiva anatomy spline quickly. So what would you fabricate this thimble bar out of? I mean, I'm a big fan of pectin personally. Um, yeah. To me, it's, I mean, it, there, there's so many design considerations though. I mean, it, the biggest, the, the biggest factor is going to be how much space do you have really? I mean, if you have limited space, your, your, your option is really titanium, to be honest. Right. Right. Um, which you can certainly do a thimble bar in titanium. That's a really nice restoration. Um, titanium is pretty lightweight. Um, and it's, it's very strong. Uh, if you have the room, I would do pectin. Uh, simply because pectin more closely resembles uh, natural bone than titanium, much more closely. Right. Um, so that that's definitely like my preference. Uh, but titanium is 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 good also. Um, some people use peak. Peak and pectin are are similar. Um, uh, I wouldn't use something like um, I wouldn't use something like trilor or trinia. However. Um, I really like Trilor, don't get me wrong. I think it's a wonderful material. I just wouldn't use it, uh, same with Trinia. Uh, I just wouldn't use it for a thimble bar um, per se, uh, because uh, the, way, the way that I understand it um, is that um, like pectin and peak are like multi-dimensional in, uh, in their like mechanical fabrication, I guess would right. be the way to say it. Whereas mm -hmm. Trilor, I believe is just like kind of like um, like lithic and layered. Um, so what can happen is the, those tooth preps can actually shear off um, horizontally. Uh, I've, I've heard of that happening. Um, so for that reason, uh, I've, I, you know, I, I would stick with, if you want to go with a, with a high performance polymer, I would stick with peak or pectin. It's a lot more expensive. I get it. Um, than something like Trilor. Um, but uh, you know, what is it? what is it really, you know, is, is, is it worth it to you? I mean, it, it is to me. It should right. Be. Right. And it worth to spend the extra money for it too. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, for a restoration like this, depending on your market and depending on what you actually use for your teeth, like if you're doing Emacs teeth on top of these, I mean, you're, you're probably going to fetch between depending on your market, six, six to 10 grand for this. Wow. So, I mean, I think it's probably worth it personally. I like the sounds of that six to, you know, just six, six to 10 grand for this case. Oh, re I mean, realistically, I mean, that's probably, yeah. that's, that's probably what in most parts of the country, I mean, maybe a little less if you're in a, in like a, you know, a, 
a less expensive market, but still. Yeah. So right now I'm drawing our implant sites. So um, just like in a regular all on four, if you've done these so far in three shape, uh, what we're doing is we're drawing our implant windows where our multi-unit abutments are. Um, it's just telling the software, don't fill these in because this is where the actual uh, uh, tie base is. Right, right. So one thing that I'm really curious about. So one thing in 2019, and Corey, I'm sure you're uh, intimately familiar with this issue. If you get these implant, uh, these implant windows too close to your gingiva boundary, like, like this, this would be too close. Typically it'll throw you an error. So I'm gonna intentionally put this really close. And see what I'm, it does. Yeah, I wanna see what happens because from what I've been told, they improved a lot of the, the algorithms for all on fours um, because uh, there are admittedly in you know prior versions, some pretty, uh, pretty annoying little bugs, not, not even bugs, just um, design issues and, and whatnot. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to test her out. We're going to give her a whirl. Give her a twirl. We should have a cross paths too. <laughs> yeah, we can try that. See what we, see if we can break the software. <laughs> load. Load is taking a little longer to load than it did earlier, so maybe. Maybe. Maybe, we, maybe we confused it. Maybe. Nope. Look at that. It did it. That's what? Cool. See, in any previous version, that would have been an error, guaranteed. Guaranteed. And, yeah, they really, uh, real talk, they really improved the algorithms for uh, the, gen the gingiva creation, like, big time. Like, because yeah. a lot of times underneath, like, like where, where it, it, like, it actually engages with your tie base, there would be all kinds of like little pieces of like corrupt data and stuff that you would have to try to smooth out and you have to go back to your gingiva anatomy and stuff like that. Uh, that like an extra they, little fin underneath of it. Yeah. Like I can see one little spot right there, but I think that's going to be okay. That's just a hole in the, cause the, the crown will be there on top of that or the, the. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if uh, it should be okay though. We'll see. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Okay, so now we are in sculpting. So uh, it is exactly what it sounds like. We are going to sculpt our gingiva. Um, so yeah, most likely you're going to be using the wax knife tool here and not doing that. So again, what really what you probably want to do here is just... Um, around the next of the teeth, pay attention to where you were that mar margin to be. So I'm gonna set, I'm basically gonna sculpt um, this junction right where I want that margin to be for the most part. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well, uh, chances are if you're, if, you're, if you're doing this in either pectin or titanium, really any, any material, you're gonna more than likely be characterizing. Yeah. So that's why uh, really what I'm paying attention to here is, uh, is where, where that margin is going to be. I mean, I guess it depends on the type of characterization. Like if you're going to use like a, like a, I wonder if you can use like, no, I think Mio is just for zirconia. I don't know that you, I don't think you can use Mio on uh, composite. I don't think so. Oh, I think like it's polymers. Uh, if you're using composite, then yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time like actually sculpting the, the gingival anatomy per se because I'm going to be sculpting composite on it anyway. You know, that actually looks pretty good from the algorithm. So this is using the new gingiva algorithm, I believe, as well. And it doesn't yeah. look terrible. No, it doesn't. I mean, they've, they've made some serious improvements to the, uh, to the programming in here, big time. Still a little, little weird thingies here and there, but really, I mean, it's, they've improved a lot. This is this is actually uh, pretty pretty darn exciting, what they've done. Uh -oh. So, st still no questions as of yet. 
So just uh, I'm knocking it out of the park. Just kidding. It's like crushing it. Killing it. Is that what the kids are saying nowadays? Killing it? Yeah. No, it's probably frowned upon. And in reality, my kids are four and one, so everything I do is awesome. They think everything is cool. All right, so that, I think that, that's good enough for right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna click next, and then we're gonna go into the big feature. The, oh. Uh oh. This is a new one. Can I? Can I change visible in on show or on hide? Hmm. So that sounds like it has something to do with these slider bars, but now I'm just kind of in limbo. Okay. Well, it's we'll let's see what happens. Just to let everybody know, this is a beta version of 2020. So we, um, when me and Bryce were talking about it earlier, I was like, I wonder if we'll have any issues <laughs> when we're presenting live. And that's how it usually is. It's a so, guarantee. It's a yeah. guarantee. That actually is a new – I've never seen that error before. I've never seen it either. On show and on hide sound like programming objects referring to these slider bars on up here. So this would be on show and then on hide uh, is what it sounds like to me. But what do I know? All what right. So you? nothing. All right. So uh, we are going to start doing these um, – uh, you know, you can go one by one roundhouse. You can also choose use same settings for posteriors and anteriors. So we have three main options here. We have keep anatomy, which is um, if we click on posteriors. So that's just to keep everything all at once. So it's yeah, going to okay. keep, it's just keeping your, your actual bridge itself as yeah. this bridge without doing yeah. any sort of cutback. That's right. Uh, top cap is going to give us kind of like a, a generic, wait, I wonder if this is the issue. It's not going to show. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it's showing us our top cap creation. See if it, see if you do the. Uh oh, what I do? It's still loading. Oh. <laughs> keep what I do. Keep clicking. Keep clicking. Click, 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 click. Okay, so it looks like that uh that show high air okay. is yeah, it's not, not it's not generating the actual internal offset. Well let's go back and let's try her again. Let's give her another whirl. I wonder if it's due to the fact that we have those little poking holes in the gingiva design. Hmm. Oh, wait. Looks like it's, looks like wait. It, uh, there we go. Uh, it's working. It's, Ish. Uh, it's working. It's doing a thing. It's doing a thing. That's right. Okay. So, um, so let's, let's go with top cap. Showing all of them except the one that you want. We want it to sh show. What's this? What's the third slide there? No. This is weird. Hit it. I can kind of see it in there. See it? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I wonder if the algorithm crashed for showing it completely. But you can kind of see the top cap mm -hmm. behind it in the background. And you can see it on the other one. So it's just like a generic shape. Honestly, this is probably what I'm going to be using um, because it does not create any undercuts, which is pretty sweet. Um, and we're just going to have to, I guess, make do on this one. You can still kind of see it, so we'll figure it out. Um, 
See if it's gonna do that on all of them. No, it's not. Just that one for some reason. Yeah, it just kind of freaked it out, I guess. Yeah. So uh, basically this is gonna be a lot like designing a custom abutment if you've used the custom abutment module. So we've got these control points where we can create basically our, our generic shape. You can, even, you can even move the margin up and down, which is pretty cool. Yep. So it's using that full contour design that you created and it's allowing you to move the margin up and down on that plane. So and for those that are familiar with the um, implant custom abutment design, it, should, it is the almost identical same control points or very similar function and form. Yeah. Yeah, same concept at the very least. So we can just kind of shape these as little mini preps. I like it. Sometimes this mouse can be a little difficult to use. So move this. Let's try. Here we go. Move those margins up just a just a hair. Let's go over here. So now you can see on this molar, you can actually see what's going on here. There we go. I'm just moving it up so that it's not interfering. The margins, I'm moving the margins up so they're not interfering with our gingiva. Realistically, if I were spending, you know, if this were an actual case, I would have spent more time reducing the gingiva underneath of the teeth in the sculpt phase. Right. So I didn't have to do this, but um, it's, not a, it's not a huge deal. Now, if you were to look at it from a Kuzel point of view, can you change the, like, the width, whether it be to meso or distal or buccal lingual of the overall prep? Does it give us that? ability it does good question not. you can adjust like the shoulder yeah but no so yeah i don't think it would because it's using your 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 pre-anatomy gotcha as a basis so it won't let you because it locks that pre-anatomy mm -hmm. so it's using that as a basis for your design so now it's not going to let you uh so then to me it looks like in the design process a good tip would be that when you're designing it actually purposely place interproximal space there because mm -hmm. you can see right there, for example, the prep surfaces are going to be overlapping. Yep. You can even take the center down if you want to make a deeper occlusal table really make these super anatomical. I'm a little nervous about the interiors. I'm curious how those are gonna work. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see. I wonder for the interiors. If it'd be better to use like the cutback settings and you can redraw the margin. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we'll see. So let's for anteriors, let's do let's try top cap right off the bat and just see what happens. Whew. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what we have. Um boy. I wonder if you put the distance to anatomy to like yeah. A little better. Still weird. Let's try it. Let's look at cut back and see. So this might be a little bit better. Let's turn off the apply uniform offset. So then we can just specify. Let's take, you know, let's take a, a millimeter off the facial. Let's take, you know, six tenths off the incisal. Let's try that. So that, there we go. That's a lot that better. better. We, still, we still have a sharp edge up here, um, but we should be able, I'm going to, we should be able to, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Rookie. Rookie mistake. 
All right, so this doesn't allow us to actually like change the design of it. This is just a, a like a blanket cutback based on these settings. Hmm. Let's go back to the top cap and see if we can. Oh, there we go. So I turned off the. Hmm. I don't know why it's uh, giving us just that f like that flat, almost a uh, concave. It's got to be. I mean, there's probably an algorithm that goes off of the relation of the path of insertion and. Um, I don't know, that's the only thing I could think of. It's gotta be from the path of insertion. No, I think we'll have a sculpting step. So if I need to sculpt these after the fact, I should be able to. Because it worked really well on the post here. Is it's definitely having a what draft. Do you know what draft angle would be? That's new. Lock draft angle. I do not. Oh, that's the, uh, that looks like it's the Okay, that's yeah. Let's turn that all the way down. That's showing like the the angle of reduction, basically. Oh. I'll be curious to see how this looks once it's um, officially launched. Right. You know how much different it will be. Yeah. Same. Okay. So let's leave that. Uh, and then we'll go on. We'll do the rest of these. I'll do the rest of these really quickly. And then we'll see if we can kind of refine that a little bit in the sculpting phase. You know what else they're going to need in here? In the software, they're going to need a mirror to like neighboring or for symmetric yeah. design. Yeah, absolutely. So you could actually mirror number nine and number eight once you yeah. get it completed. Yeah, like symmetrical design. Yep. Yeah, without a doubt. So, so three shape, if you're listening, it's symmetrical a good idea. Symmetrical design, absolutely. Still no questions. You're doing good, Bryce. Uh, you know, appreciate that. This is a brave new world for all of us. So, okay, I'm going to sculpt the rest of that one as well. Let's go on, turn off the anatomical top cap. Oof. Whoa. It looks good. Mm. You should leave one with a little bit of gingiva and see if the software will keep it. Deal. Or if it will. That one. Yeah, just to see if it will actually reduce it or subtract it. Yeah. The big thing I'm noticing is that I think the issue is it has these control points, like not necessarily in the right places, I think is the issue that we're running into with these right here. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a little weird how that works. Hmm. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> yeah, well, like, look at that. What's it's like pinched in? Yeah, what's up with that? 
Almost there. Almost there. It is a little weird. Not gonna lie. A little yeah. funny. It's not as um. The posterior looks pretty good. Yeah, the posterior has worked great. And then when you get to the anterior, it's like a little iffy-ish. A little wonky. A little wonky. Still. The cool thing about this design, though, is if you wanted to, you could keep the posterior. Let's say if you're going to do this out of zirconium. I mean, you could keep the posterior all uh, the zo part of the zirconia bridge itself, and then in the anterior, you could form it so it wasn't. That looks interesting. Yeah. Um, let's try cut back on these. There we go. So let's bring this in front of that. High base. I'm afraid to click the reset button. I'm literally terrified. Since there's no undo button for it, I probably yeah. won't do it. So you can see it still has a, a couple of bugs here and there, but I mean, is that not expected from a beta? You know? I demand perfection. Yeah. The reason why they have the betas is so we can find issues like this and then get it perfected when hopefully it's officially they're, released. Oh. Hopefully they're watching. It's not wanting to do that, is it? It really doesn't it really doesn't want to do that. Is Gingiva passing over that area and that's why? Yes. <clears throat> Maybe that's part of it. Should we go back and see if we can fix it? It's up to you. Let's try it. Bringing it down. Let's get rid of that guy. Yeah, maybe maybe this, maybe this is part of the problem here. We've got too much gingiva built up. Way to go. Way to be an over over ginger over gingivator. I don't appreciate that remark. All right. Try it. Give it a go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's having it's having really it's having difficulty with the uh, the implant sites. It did okay on this one back here. We did all right. However, on the other ones, it's just having a, a slight issue. A what? It issue. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. 
you have any ideas? No. Well, no, we have some questions just... now. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? Call support. Hmm. I'm going to guess it's it's got to be something with uh, – it could be it could be the library i mean it, just the fact that right there see how that rendering is off yep. that's what's throwing me off so it's got to be maybe in relation to the implant site itself um yeah i mean for it to it's like it's reversed it's doing it on all of them but one let's go back and see if there's anything different about this one Everything's different. Oh, no. Because that one technically has a hole in it. Maybe it needs to be completely filled. Let's just play. Let us play with it. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's got to work. It's got to. It's, I have faith in you. Hmm. Or it could just be a glitch. Well, now they're all working except for this guy, it looks like. So let's go to cut back. Gosh, dang it. I don't know, man. Um, hmm, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's it's still cut it back. Go back to cut back, and then oh, is it not allowing you to do? See if it lets you change your line. Nope. Never no, mind. It just keeps it keeps deleting it. This is where we would probably create a support ticket with three shape and see, <laughs> hey, what's going on? Let's see if it'll allow us at least to produce the thimble bar. We see that there's a couple of glitches with the actual implant sites themselves. Hmm. Um, it's kind of hard to say exactly what it is. It could be just the relationship of the uh, library to the actual uh, abutment site, or it could be the library, could be Bryce. We don't know. Could be me. Could be me. Yeah, see, we've got a hole. Not the right kind of hole. Yeah, it's... I wonder if it's because your implant, your restoration is so close to the... the I guess the, the actual uh, channel for the tie base. Yeah, Maybe it needs well. to be further. Very well could be. I so understand why it worked okay on this one. And the other ones are all uh, all jacked up. Let's go back. Let's try this one again. Yeah, see, it's still not... Whoa. I don't know, man. I think it's going to take more than an hour to troubleshoot this. Unfortunately. 
unfortunately. That's right. I say we, I say we skip through. I mean, the the concept is there. We're able to see that part. Um, slight. That's our webinar, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slight slight glitch that we can't control, uh, especially when doing live presentations like this. This is how it normally happens. I mean, it it worked for us earlier, and then of course going through it again. Mm -hmm. Must have been me. Definitely be something for us to uh, oh, it's just a control panel problem on our end. Yeah. Be something to pick uh, Brandon's brain about. Yeah. And see, maybe have him go back and maybe we can have him watch this and see where we're going wrong here. <laughs> Probably something really simple. Probably something uh, we're doing. Yeah. I would say. Do you want to create a secondary order with the Ooh, yes? That's cool. So you could use split file. That is wild. I like so it. Say yes. Let's see what it does. It'll probably explode. Yes. Let's go ahead and export. Oh, there's. Do you see that it created a duplicate? Zero 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 six duplicate. I'll be dipped. Okay, so there's our bar. Oh, good job, Bryce. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great, huh? But Let's then... see. But wait, there's more. Oh, wait. That's not it. That's something different. Are you sure? Creation date. Creation date. No, that was from... You know what? That is something that was there. If that was what Evan did last week, I thought it created a secondary folder. Oh. Man. So it... I don't know what saying yes did. Update no. Wonder if we. Uh... I wonder if we went through and, and took a uh, copy and copy and reuse CAD. Yeah, you could copy and reuse CAD design. Honestly, I'd probably scan the thing in though. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool. cool if you could do split file, but I'd rather scan it in either way. All right. Well, that was interesting. Uh, takeaways. What are your takeaways? Um, takeaways are super cool, first off, uh, being that it was like streamlined in to actually creating a Toronto Bridge instead of having to have a third-party uh, actual uh, um, third-party library that you have to import in. Next takeaway is it's a little glitchy in the beta software. So for everybody that's watching, this was a beta version of the software just so we could show the concept of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we may be one of the first companies to actually show it. And I think I may have figured out why. Because uh, <laughs> it, it uh, it's like glitch. So I'm sure 3 Shape is perfecting that for the actual yeah. official release. However, the concept behind it is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, couple little things that would probably help out like mirroring uh, or a, at least a uh, symmetric design option would be pretty convenient uh, yeah. but it's still pretty neat um, what, what other takeaways what are what am I missing uh, I mean I think you pretty much hit it all um, definitely needs a little you know it, it's definitely gonna need a little bit of work but I mean what first version of any software doesn't really I mean yeah. dental or otherwise and, you know, I'd be curious to see when, when the actual full release comes out, uh, yeah. what, what that's going to look like, um, yep. like you said. So, but no, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, as it's perfected, it's going to make uh, thimble bars a lot easier, which is, you know, there's a huge need for that. So, yep. yep. Cool. Well, it's, uh, we got a couple of minutes. If anybody has any questions, excuse me, any questions? Well, I almost died there for a second. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, let's see here. Uh, looks like we don't have anything on the actual uh, 
Facebook page or Facebook viewing, and we don't have any questions in our chat at all. So uh, Bryce, you did a, a great job. Uh, for people that are tuning in for the rest of the week, we have two more sessions and it's, I think this is actually gonna conclude our, our free training sessions uh, for a while. Um, we have on Wednesday, Evan and Bryce are gonna do advanced denture design. So I know there was extra questions that people had during the first denture seminar. So if anybody, if you guys are watching, if you have any questions or wanna prod a little bit further in the denture design aspect, uh, Wednesday would be the time to do it. And then we're gonna conclude the, the session with the custom impression tray design. Super exciting and revolutionary and life-changing. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I think in 2020 software, we'll be able to highlight the fact that it has uh, tissue stops now, which is nice. Yes. Uh, something that the previous versions did not have. So um, that's it for me. Bryce, you got anything? No, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, hope everybody has a, uh, a fun, productive week. And I will see everybody on Wednesday. Cool. See you guys. See you.